Somehow I'm growing a bunch of new hair. These look like little baby hairs. <laughs> and I think it's because I've been losing a lot of hair. One of the meds I was taking, alopecia was a side effect and hair loss. And I sure have been losing a lot of hair. So these little baby hairs, we're grateful they're here, even though they're kind of make me look a little wild. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be chewing gum during this video because I'm a little nauseous. So I know that that can be a little obnoxious, but I have to make it accessible so that I don't throw up. So we're just gonna have to live with it. So this might be one of the hardest, if not the hardest videos I've ever recorded on this channel just because it's incredibly vulnerable. I haven't told most of my friends. I think I only told like five friends or less that this even happened. So pretty much no one in my life even knows about this, let alone telling the internet. But I really want to talk about this experience because I had no idea that this could happen as a side effect from a med. And I think it's like really, really important to talk about it and raise awareness about it. And so even though it's hard to talk about for me <clears throat> and it's really scary that it even happened and it makes me really sad to talk about, I really think it's important to talk about. So, I have endometriosis, as we already know. I've been on one med for several months now, and this other med called my Fembri, I was on it for about a month back in November about. Maybe I started it in November, I went into December. That was giving me blood clot-like symptoms in my leg. And so it was really scary, so I only took it for three to four weeks. And during that time, I had definitely increased depression. I didn't know that it was related to the med. I just was going through so many things at the time that I kind of just assumed that it was, you know, because of everything I was going through because life was really hard and stressful. And so I just found myself like crying a lot at like anything, at something sad, at something happy. I'd be scrolling on Instagram and see like an animal or a really sad story about someone dying and I would just cry. I'm not usually like that. And then I definitely had increased thoughts of, I feel like I'm a burden to everyone. Would the world just be better without me? But that wasn't the worst of it. <laughs> no, 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 no. So went off of that when I started having the blood clot symptoms and I was off it for several weeks. And then I had an endo appointment with my endometriosis doctor maybe a week before Christmas. And she said, okay, go back on the Myfembry and we'll try this again. So I went back on the Myfembry and this is a newer med. I didn't realize it, but it was only approved in 2021. So it is a very, very new med. So I was really nervous to try any of the endo meds, but I didn't want to try Orlicia, which is the one that I was reading a review and it basically said like one day I was fine, the next day I was anxious, the next day I was depressed, the fourth day I was suicidal. And that really scared me obviously just because my mental health has really declined in the past six months following the same trajectory as my physical health. Having to give up my company was really stressful, not being able to take classes at school has been really stressful. Like I've had to give up everything in my life and I've been totally debilitated by my symptoms. So my mental health hasn't been good. So we avoided the Orlicia because, you know, that one seemed like it could really cause those symptoms. One of the people in the study of like 2,000 people they did it with, one of those women committed suicide. So I just, I'd done my research and I didn't want to do that one. So they put me on this my Myfembry instead. So on my way back to the timeline, had the appointment with the endo doctor for Christmas, went back on it that night. So this was a Tuesday, and then Christmas was the following Monday. The Tuesday after Christmas, my mom and I got sick with a GI stomach bug, and I don't know if that contributed to what happened here because, you know, I had just crazy diarrhea, and so my stomach completely emptied out. I was very sick. I don't think I ate normally that day. So that night, taking the Myfembrate was on pretty much a completely empty stomach. I've also been taking a ton of ibuprofen during this time because I have the really bad jaw pain after my wisdom tooth surgery. So who knows what of those factors contributed to what happened, but I was on a lot of ibuprofen and I had that empty stomach. So I took the med Tuesday night and then Wednesday I woke up and I just told my mom like I'm feeling kind of weird. I feel kind of off. I don't really feel like myself. I feel kind of down. 
And then by the end of that day, I was basically having constant suicidal thoughts that were just like intrusive. And I felt really embarrassed that I couldn't control these thoughts. I felt kind of shame that I couldn't control them and I didn't know what was going on. But, you know, I thought about it more and I was like, okay, I think this is, I think this is the med. And so I got up the courage to tell my mom that night and I was like, hey, I'm having like a really hard time. And she was really supportive. She was like, do you want me to like sleep next to you all night? What should we do? So we played a couple games until pretty late just to try distracting my brain. But it was really scary. And she even, she was like, promise me that, <laughs> promise me that you won't like do anything without telling me, you know, if this gets worse. And I, I couldn't even promise. <laughs> I just said, I hope so. Because I just, I didn't know. And so that was really scary. And so that night I didn't take the med because I was pretty sure I was from the med. And the half-life is at least 36 hours. So it takes a long time to get out of your system. So then I made it till Thursday and called the doctor and said, actually I didn't call them, I sent them a message. I said like, look, I'm having like constant suicidal intrusive thoughts. I think they're from the Fifembry, I'm off the Fifembry. And I was also, I was really embarrassed to send a message to my doctor because I knew they would call me to make sure I was okay. And I, I just, I hate crying <laughs> in front of other people. It's almost easier on this channel because like when I'm filming it, no one's watching. It's like later when I post it after I've edited, the people watch, but it's not live with someone. And I really just like crying in front of people. I know it's just my own personal issue I'm trying to get over. So I just like, I knew they would call and I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna cry. So of course they called to make sure I was okay, which is what they should do. And they were like, are you with someone? And I said, yes. And they were like, do you have support? And I was like, yes. And they made sure that I like, I didn't have like a plan or anything. So they did everything they needed to, to make sure I was safe. So they actually, multiple people called me, <laughs> which is, you know, good for them calling to make sure I was okay. But of course I'm just like crying to multiple people because it was really scary and I, and I just felt completely out of control I didn't feel like myself I didn't feel like I was in control of the situation it was just really scary so they made sure I was off the my February and they said okay like one of our providers is gonna get back to you and like we're gonna figure out what to do next because my doctor was out of office this week I mean it's like right after Christmas so anyway the rest of Thursday I also it was just like constant thoughts like I would, the whole thing was a distraction game. I would try to distract myself and it was just this like constant, I mean, people talk about intrusive thoughts and I do personally have intrusive thoughts of bad things that could happen, but I have never had constant suicidal intrusive thoughts of just like, you're a burden, you're taking up, you're wasting space in the world, you're taking valuable. <laughs> it's just so sad, you know? <laughs> You're taking resources away from other people. It was just like the worst thoughts you could have. And I was having them. And I say this, I say all these things, not for pity or whatever, but I had no idea that medications could cause this. I knew that they could cause, I mean, it's a side effect to be depressed and have suicidal ideations from a lot of stuff, but I had no idea that this is what the experience could look like. And I don't, I don't want someone else to have to be completely unprepared like I was because I don't know anyone else who has gone through this. And it was just really scary. And so I want to tell people about the experience so that they're prepared that like it can happen like that. Like you can be fine one day and the next day you can wake up and not be okay. And I stopped taking the med as soon as I could have. And it still took all of Wednesday and all of Thursday. And then by Friday, I woke up feeling like a bit better. Like the, the constant intrusive thoughts were gone by Friday. But it was like 48 hours that were really, really scary. And I was in this 
space where I just, oh my god, my hand is like shaking. I just felt out of control. I didn't feel in control of my body or my mind. And it was just a very, very scary point. I didn't tell most of my friends. I think, like I said, I only told like five people. And one of those people took it really seriously. And I'm really grateful for them. I think other people didn't really take it seriously because... I just have a history of being really resilient and being really in control and not being in a scary place. And so when I told a couple people like, hey, I'm, I think a med I'm taking, it's giving me a side effect of depression and suicidal thoughts. People just thought like, oh, she's just letting me know. She doesn't necessarily need anything from me, but she's just letting me know. I did really need people in that moment, but I, I guess I should have been better about letting people know like, hey, I really, I need support right now but my mom was just like incredible and my my dad I, I didn't tell him until Thursday night I just felt yeah just really embarrassed about it and he was visiting my grandma and I didn't want to worry him so when I called him like he was really supportive and he took it really well and so I, I know that I can really rely on my parents in a crisis but yeah it was just really scary <laughs> And I had no idea that it could happen like that. And so, yeah, I'm going to see my endometriosis doctor on Friday and hopefully talk through other options. Because I think once you're prone to this side effect, like I don't think I should take the Orlicia or whatever. And I, I don't know what other endomeds are out there. She said, like, I think the older meds just take a lot longer to work, which would obviously suck. And... You know would love something quicker but this is the situation we're in and i was also nervous to tell a doctor because i was like maybe at the very beginning i was like maybe i should just push through this because maybe this is the only option like you're also not in like a logical state when you're in a mental health crisis you are not in a logical place and so for me i was like what if this is the only med that's out there and like if i can't take this like there's nothing more they can do for me and so i was just like Maybe I should just like buckle down and just like try to take it. Obviously not the right thought and not the right choice. And so I was really glad that I did tell them on the second day. And it was from the meds, you know, like I went off it and I didn't take it Wednesday or Thursday. And by Friday, like I said, I was, I was feeling like normal again. So yeah, I'm glad I just made that choice on my own and that's okay to do if something is... <laughs> Like in this situation, creating a mental health crisis, you can just do what you need to do to survive. And that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, incredibly scary experience. And I would say like, if you know someone who is going through this, please, like all I needed was presence. Like someone to just tell me how much they cared about me, how much they wanted me to stay. That's what I needed to hear. <laughs> And so tell people, tell people what they mean to you. Tell people that you love them. Tell people what a difference they've made in your life, even just out of the blue, because most of my friends had no idea what I was going through. And so just hearing really sweet things from people is, is like a huge, a huge thing that can really turn around someone's day or even save their life. And so please just be there for people if people need you and you have the ability please be there for people you just have no idea what other people are going through and that's something I really try to keep in mind so yeah it was definitely one of the scariest experiences in my life just because I just felt so out of control and it was changing my hormones and my brain chemistry and I couldn't control that and it just wasn't getting out of my system very fast which sucked. And if you personally go through this, please reach out to people. I probably could have reached out to more, but I was just so, like I said, like embarrassed and felt shame, which is not, not true. Like it's, I shouldn't feel shame. I had no control of the situation and you should always reach out if you need support. So that's something I'm personally working on, but it is really hard for me to reach out to people. So when I tell people like, I'm feeling really depressed as a side effect from a med and I'm having suicidal ideation. That was like the extent of what I was capable of doing at that time. So I'm not gonna like get mad at myself for not reaching out more, it is what it is. But I also didn't know what to do in that moment, right? Like I didn't know what to say to friends to ask them to support me. So I think that's something that also like, I'm gonna try to figure out what would have been better to say. Like 
I need X, Y, and Z. I need presents from you if you're capable of giving it or whatever. Or I need to jump on the phone with you. Like I need to be better about asking for exactly what I need instead of like waiting for people to ask what I need. But again, if you're a friend on the other end, like ask what people need from you would be great. So yeah, just a really scary experience and I'm really grateful to still be here. It's still just like hard because that was really scary and sad. But we're hoping that other meds I try, that is not the experience I have. But I just wanted, like I said, to share this experience because I never heard that it could happen like this. And I think hearing personal experience is really important to raising awareness because even like that review that someone left of like, by day four I was like suicidal. That didn't get into the depths of how out of control I felt and like explaining where my mind was like the whole thing i'm just hoping to give more details to hopefully help more people yeah so grateful for all of you for watching this supporting please be kind someone you encounter could be going through the worst day of their life and we just don't know what everyone is going through so i'm sending you so much love big hugs and i will see you in the next video i promise bye